Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya. Same. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, sweetheart, kindly smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification so you get notified each time I upload. And please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all, and I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you for all the support, all the love always coming through for me you all are super awesome thank you all so much so today we'll be talking about something that i really found very sad and it's actually about a black cancer city teenager who was shot for going to the wrong house to pick up his siblings and um uh, police believe that it was in a case of mistaken identity and i disagree with them and whoever that one i would like you know this is i disagree because a case of mistaken identity, somebody rang your bell and you shot the person from the window, right? And came out again to the person. And it's in the, even in the head. He did it in, like straight up in the head. And somebody's telling me it's mistaken identity. And they are looking now, they are making excuse for the person. That committed a crime and this young boy is right now fighting for his life i am really mad i am sad but what can i say welcome to america you know what say go to the screen let me roll this clip we'll come back to talk about it i absolutely want to read your comment let me know what you all think and straight up let me roll the clip the police say someone inside a northland home shot a teen in error after the boy drove to the wrong address to pick up younger siblings Good evening, I'm Shannon Rousseau. And I'm Kevin Barry. That teen was supposed to go to a home on Northwest 115th Terrace. Instead, he went to a home one block over on Northeast 115th Street. LA County Prosecutor's Office says that they have not received any criminal referral. But this is still a very active investigation with police telling us that this teen is in the hospital with injuries that are considered to be life-threatening. At the home where neighbors say it happened, a man vacuums the front steps after replacing a glass door. Fox 4 asked what happened. I guess you'll have to check with other authorities. Well, do you know this? Quote, suspect was brought to headquarters to give a statement. Older visitors also did not answer questions. Do you know any details about it? Yeah, but I'm not at liberty to give that out, man. You yeah. know that. Why not? <laughs> well, you're a friend. Yeah, he's my buddy, man, and I love him to death. Is he an older guy? It's not this guy, right? No, come on, man. We all take care of one another, you know? Yeah. So, Y'all, there was nothing that was an error about that shooting. My nephew rang the doorbell. He opened up the door. He shot him in the head and said, don't come back here again. When he fell down, he shot him again. That is not an error. Like I said, from the onstart, it is not an error. There is nothing anyone will tell me that will convince me that it is an error. Somebody rang your bell and the, all you could do is boom and came out again, boom. And somebody's telling me it's an error. How is that an error? They are even, they are the one actually, you know what? Let's get into the, uh, that's my, my, nephew was on his way to pick up his brothers from their friend's house a few blocks away from his house he didn't have his phone so he wasn't using gps he was just going based on the direction that my sister gave him unfortunately he pulled into the driveway of the wrong house rang the walked up to the door rang the doorbell a man opened up the door, looked him in the eye, and said, don't ever come back here, as he shot him in the head. My nephew fell down, and the man shot him again. He was able to get up and ran to the neighbor, who did not open the door. He ran to three houses before one of the neighbors said, put your hands up and lay on the ground. And then he laid on the ground like he passed out before the neighbor called the police for help. My nephew is 16 years old. 
you hear these stories about racism in America and you think, wow, how sad is that? But then you have this little bit of hope because you feel like you're so far away and it would never happen to your family. It would never happen to you. But God, the people in this country are sick. And it's so hard to believe that this amount of hate lives in people. And they hate people based on things that are not even under their control. I cannot believe this is the country that we live in. This is the country. This is America. So I've gotten a lot of DMs from people wondering how I how they can help. The only help that I need and that my family needs right now is to get attention on this situation. I want to get as much light shine on this situation as we can possibly get because the man that shot, that looked my nephew in the eye, pulled out a gun and shot him in the head. And then when he fell down, shot him again is currently at his house living his best life. And my nephew is in the hospital bed. Yes, he is alive, thank you God. But we don't need to wait for black boys to die for us to say enough is enough. We don't need for them to not be able to move in order for us to say enough is enough. An attack on one black child is an attack on every single black kid because at the end of the day, they only see one thing. And the fact that we know deep down, if it was any other way if this was a black man if this was my daddy he would not be standing in front of his house with a new glass door cleaning up the staircase i don't know if that was him cleaning up the staircase or if it was a neighbor cleaning up the staircase but there was a comment made by the neighbor in the news report that fox 4kc reported we look out for each other who are we looking out for Because my nephew ran from door to door. So who are we looking out for? Not the 16-year-old boy. No, not him. A 16-year-old black child named Ralph Yarl was shot twice by a white man after accidentally ringing the doorbell of the wrong home attempting to pick up his sibling. Ralph was first shot in the head through the glass door, and then while he was bleeding out on the ground, he was shot again. The shooter was taken by police and released hours later. The shooter was a white man and held for 24 hours, which is the longest police can hold somebody before pressing felony charges. The police are saying that they're waiting to gather enough evidence before pressing charges. Fortunately, Ralph is currently in stable condition. His high school teacher said that his goal is to study chemical engineering. If the police really did need more time to collect more evidence, sure. But there's no way that we aren't out there thinking, you know, if it wasn't a white man who shot a black boy, if it was a black man who shot a white boy, maybe that black man would still be in prison right now, would still be held by police. Maybe they would have been charged faster. Okay, guys, this kid behind me, his name is Ralph Yarl. He's from Kansas City, and he went to pick up his younger siblings from a house on 116th Terrace. By mistake, he went to street. He knocked on the door, rang the doorbell, and the homeowner, a white man, shot him through the glass in the head. And then he came outside and shot him in the head again and told him not to come back here. And this white man claims it was a mistake. How is it a mistake? In Kansas, we do have stand your ground laws. However, every law I've ever read says that you have to shoot that person in your home. If they're outside of your home, you cannot shoot them. So I just wanna know, why has he not been charged yet? This poor baby is suffering in the hospital right now because of racism. Why? It's 2023 and we have to do better. 
And this boy needs justice. Justice for Ralph. My mistake, it was 115th Street. Contact this prosecutor right here. Feel free to look up the news article if you need to. We need to use our voices to get justice. This isn't right. <clears throat> really, I don't know how where to even start or how to start. But this is one of the like you know one of that saddest this thing you listen to and you are just like completely tired and fed up. You shot the first one. I'm like all he wanted was just to kill because he. Sh and they, okay, now let's let's talk about the fact that the boy ran to like two to three doors asking for help, and with the blood gushing out, they were asking him hands up. And oh my god, you know, I just don't want to imagine the uh the pains the young boy went through, like you know, before he got help, because like he kind of passed out before the police came. For how long are people going to like you know keep experiencing? Yeah, they keep telling you there is no longer racism and all that, but what is going on? They keep telling you stop talking about it and it's gonna go away. How are we supposed to stop talking about it when every day we are at the receiving end? How are we supposed to stop talking about it? It is not affecting you. That's why you people are not even bothered. That's why you don't want people to talk about it. That's why you don't want anything to be said about it. We are at the receiving end and we are gonna talk about it. Because if we won't talk, people are dying. People's kids are dying. Somebody's brother, somebody's cousin, somebody's son. That it's not that it is not you today doesn't mean it won't be you tomorrow. You never can tell what is gonna happen. This is where I'm gonna call it a day. See you all in my next video. I am sorry I sound so angry, but yo, the truth really got to be told. See you all. Bye for now.